Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the Tarot Lessons 101. For those of you guys new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. For those of you guys returning, welcome, my lovelies. Let's get into this. Finally, we are here face to face with Major Arcana number 13, the Death Card the child of the great transformers, the lord of the gate of death, zodiac trump of Scorpio, Mars rules, Pluto exalted, tree of life path number 24. The universe is change. Every change is the effect of an act of love. All aspects of love contain pure joy, but die daily. Death is the apex of one curve of the snake life behold all opposites as necessary complements it is very difficult to discuss the death card without also discussing the next trump which is temperance card from an alchemical point of view death really should come after temperance for the not so simple reason that temperance foreshadows the final stage of the great work death is the final stage itself like in the temperance card there is a process that is being made, what we would consider putrefaction and the balancing, transmutation. But the death card is exactly that, purification and alchemy, a technical name given by its adapts to the series of chemical changes, which develops the final form of life from the original latent seed in the Orphic egg. It is a threshold or a threefold process that gently warms the Orphic egg during its last most sensitive phase before birth. In the Thoth tarot, we see a cauldron and in the process bubbling away as a scorpion, serpent, and eagle, the three images and aspects of Scorpio. The scorpion is found in the lower right corner of the death card and symbolizes the lowest aspect of Scorpio. The lowest is symbolized by the scorpion, which was supposed by early observers of nature to commit suicide when finding itself rained with fire or otherwise in a desperate situation. This represents the petrification and its lowest form. The strain of environment has become intolerable and the attacked element willingly subjects itself to change. The middle aspect of Scorpio is represented as a serpent which can be seen in the lower left corner. The serpent is sacred, lord of the life and death, and its method of progression suggests the rhythmical undulation of those twin phases of life, which we call respectively life and death. The third symbol of Scorpio is the eagle that we see in the upper left corner of the card. The eagle described as the highest aspect of the card, which represents exaltation above solid matter. It was understood by the early chemists that in certain experiments, the purest and most tenuous element present were given off as gas or vapor. If all three of the other aspects in turn allowed to unfold perfectly, they generate the gentle heat necessary to incubate the Orphic egg and its final stage of development. The death card is the antithesis of those found in traditional packs. This is no stiff green reaper standing on the earth indiscriminately mowing down people, young and old, humble and highborn. This death is vivacious and flexible. The formula of continued life is death or the petrification. Death is thus, in truth, the original secret. Death card represents, I am weary. I'm only going to say this once. Death card is usually a card that brings fear in people, which is to no surprise, right? Because we often, uh, as humans, fear death, whether it's the fear of death itself, the death of ego, the death of a cycle, the death that brings new change often, that not in my experience uh, with the tarot, when people see the death card, they immediately jump to conclusions, freaking out, thinking someone's going to die. The truth of the matter is we all come face to face with death on everyday basis, whether it's the physical aspect of death of someone we love, whether it's the ending cycle, the conclusion of a relationship, etc. 
But the death card doesn't always just represent someone's going to die. And this is something that people have a misconception of, which is why they often fear it. However, when we think about the death card, We should never feel fear. Now, this is a human behavior. Our natural instinct is to uh, try to stay away from change, right? Because we're creatures of habit. Um, but it is very important to understand that when this card shows up, it's speaking about a new cycle. Yes, there is an ending cycle, but with it, it's bringing a new beginning. We should never interpret this card as someone's physical death. It is unethical to call it as such. As time progresses, and the more you learn to master your craft and the cards, you learn to understand even when coming face to face with such events, we never, ever predict death. Like I said, it is unethical. Death point blank means change. Every time we see it in TV shows or movies where the killer leaves the death card at a crime scene or people predicting in these Hollywood movies, a scene where someone pulls out the death card and immediately means they're going to die every bloody time. It makes us just want to come out of our seat, <laughs> for heaven's sake. If we think it and be more realistic about it, if the killer in the movie was to leave this card, it would imply that he's going to stop killing and straighten up and fly right. How anticlimactic, right? Let's look at the basics of this card. That death really looks pretty noble. He's dead center in the card, getting completely ignored by the other people present. You see death coming straight in through the middle of the card, and no one is paying attention. Not the other two people to the side, not the king who's face down and dead as a doornail, and not the priest. The sun is rising, and death is on the march. This change is happening and nothing's going to stop it. No one's looking at the rising sun. Death is wearing armor and it's completely prepared to knock whatever he needs to out of the way. You have no choice here. There is no choice in the matter. This card appears when change is coming, like it or not. Usually, things have gotten so stagnant and comfortable that your ass is living on it. It, literally an imprint on your chair and it's time to move i like change however it comes along you have been still for too long and the universe has decided to shake you loose there can be no life without death you've got to release change change is coming you cannot ignore it it can be scary and difficult and sometimes includes great tragedy your life is about to go through a full 180 your relationships and the structure of your universe have all changed and you have grown like it or not but this change and struggle comes with the beauty of rebirth a new opportunity if you embrace the change when one door closes you can kick out a few windows and let the light shine in and you got to release everything old you have to be stripped down to the bone to start over entirely yes it hurts man does it hurt sometimes it hurts so badly but it's worth it one of the best things about death on a grander scale of things is that he is tired, he is coming in slowly and steadily. If you're paying attention, you can walk alongside him instead of being trampled underfoot. So you see the death card is not something to fear. It will never tell you when yourself is going to die. And this is something I'm often asked. It's not designed to do so. However, when handling the cards, they are a tool that is highly used in the practice and those with such gifts as sight, clairvoyance, psychic abilities, or clairaudience, we may not be able, uh, we may actually be able to pick up on certain information, but we may not be given uh, this type of guidance or plain out say, yes, someone's going to die. It is not the purpose of the death card itself to represent a physical death. I cannot highlight this process because everyone usually fears the death card, but it doesn't solely represent a physical aspect. 
It is the ending cycle of something. And keep in mind, you guys, there is ethics behind what we do. Just to put it more simple or give you an example, when we've been able to foresee a difficult situation that would in fact speak about the client going through some type of mourning process, depending again with the cards that follow, um, we would advise the client to let go of any type of animosity, anger, or grudges to facilitate the process of healing, to reconnect. There is no greater thing in life worse than regret and having to deal with that. However, I do want to make this clear. Not everyone is able to pick this up or to even predict such things. So there is no reason to fear this card. Like you've heard, the tarot cards are known as the fullest journey. And all major arcanas are steps one will encounter in our lifetime. So look at this way. If life came to a complete ending with the death card, then that would mean that the major arcana would only have 13 cards ending with the death card. Clearly, we know it does not. Death is a stage along the way of the fool's journey. We must go through in order for us to continue to grow and subsequently to continue along our journey. And this in fact represents change and transformation, death of a cycle. And so it represents the start of a new cycle. Everything is temporary and from death comes life transitions, letting go, closure are all keywords associated to this card. The white horse symbolizing strength, vitality, subconscious strives. White is completion and new beginnings. The contrast of white with the armor of the rider black is a reminder of the great extremes in life. The flag with the symbol of the great flower consisting of five years of grain. It's a pentagram pointing down, stating harvest time. The ship behind the death is a ship of souls in the background. It's an image from Egyptian mythology. The boat carries the souls from death to reincarnation, the standing from the changing faces in life. The heavenly gates in the background next to the sun knocking on heaven's door. Death is not the end. It's quite possible to be dead long before one dies and to live, to live on longer than when after we've passed. The gray sky is symbolic because the sun may be coming up or may be going down depending on how you read. The gray in the background indicates indifference and respect to death as a part of life. It's an inspiration towards calm spirit. The writer itself and his armor indicating there is no way you can penetrate it. There is no escaping this change, but also the glorious sun in the background. There is a bright future ahead. It calls for a time of transformation, major change, a wake-up call for you to be moving in a different direction. It's indicating there is an aspect in your life that you need to let go of in order to make space for the new one. One must surrender and let go. It is a necessity. Let go because there is something in your life that is holding you back, that is holding your progress and your soul's evolution. It is encouraging you at the present to be brave. There is, there is a reason for this. Change, the more you accept it and embrace it, the less you try to control it, the easier it will be, this transformation that is inevitable. Let go of your self-limiting beliefs, insecurities, and embrace this new life after death that the card is pointing you towards. If you look closely at the card, the king that is laying on the floor has a crown to his head to the side of his head that has fallen off his head. This is a representation of the death of ego, the loss of a control, as that is the purpose of the ego, setting it aside as a symbolization of respect to the universe and what the universe has in store for you. So my lovelies, as always, what does the death card represent to you? Does it remind you of someone in your everyday life, a character or a movie? Sound off in the comments below. To me, the death card is a perfect representation of the movie What Dreams May Come of Robin Williams. The death and the physical 
the unknown aspect to the subconscious, the spirit realm, but more than anything, it speaks about the physical death of someone or something to have a deeper understanding of life after death, meaning death itself is not conclusion, but the ending cycle and the beginning of a new cycle in our soul's evolution. Well, my lovelies, we are at the final conclusion of learning a little bit more about this card. I hope that you learned and feel a little bit more comfortable recognizing and understanding the death card. As always, I'll see you guys soon. Till then, bye-bye. Oh.